Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to talk about how to solve problems involving conditional probabilities. This video shows you how to use tree diagram and contingency table to find conditional probabilities. If you find that this video is useful, please share it to your friends, to your students, or to anybody who need this. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe my channel by hitting the subscribe button below so that you won't miss any videos later. So, let's start the lesson right now. In this video, I'm going to talk about conditional probability. Conditional probability can be denoted as B stroke A. B stroke A means the probability of event B occurring given that the event A has already happened. The formula for the probability of B stroke A is equal to probability A in the set B divided by probability of A. Now, how to identify the conditional probability based on the description given? For example, the probability that John will be late for school given that it is raining in the morning is 0 0.30. In this case, we are given that it is raining. So, the event raining has already happened. So, the probability that John will be late for school is 0 0.3. So, in this case, this is the conditional probability and denoted as L stroke R. L represent late, R represent raining. So, probability L stroke R is equal to 0 0.30. In this case, we can identify the conditional probability based on the keyword given that. Other than the keyword given that, sometimes we will be given the keyword if, when, or it is known that or some other keyword. Next example, 10% of the girl students are local. From this description, we already know that the students are girls. From the girl students, 10% are local. So this is conditional probability L stroke G. L stands for local student, G stands for girl. And if we compare with example number 3, among the girl students, 10% are local. So example number 2 and example number 3, they are the same. So means we already know that the students are girls. So 10% from the girl students are local. So this is the conditional probability L stroke G. Another example. The probability that a student who failed the mathematics test is a girl is 0 0.3. So, means we have already know that the students failed the mathematics test. So, from those who failed the test, the probability that the student is a girl, the probability is 0 0.3. So this is the conditional probability G stroke F. Another example, the probability that a girl student selected at a random wear spectacles is 2 stroke 3. So means we already know the student selected is a girl student. Then the probability that the student wearing spectacles is 2 stroke 3. So this is also conditional probability with S stroke G. When talking about conditional probability, we must talk about tree diagram. Tree diagram is an effective method to solve problems involving conditional probability 
all the problems involving sequence of events. In tree diagram, the first event start from a point and separate into two or more branches. Each branch represents a possible outcome. The outcome is written at the end of the branch. The probability of the outcome is written on the branch. For each pair of branches, the sum of the probability is equal to 1. Each level of branch focus at one event. The first level of branch represents the first event and the second level of branch represents the second event. When labeling the probability of second event, this is the probability of B occur given that A has happened. So this is conditional probability B stroke A. Then this is the probability B does not occur given that A has happened. And this is the probability of B occur given that A has not happened. And this is the probability of B does not occur given that A has not happened. Now for final outcomes. Each part represents one outcome. The first outcome is A intersect B. The probability is equal to the probability of A times probability B through A. The second outcome is A intersect complement of B. The probability is equal to probability A times probability complement B through A. The third outcome is complement A intersect B and the probability is probability of complement A times probability B stroke complement A. Then the fourth outcome is complement A intersect complement B and the probability is equal to probability complement A times probability complement B stroke complement A. From the tree diagram, actually we can find so many information. For example, from the first equation, when we rearrange the first equation, we can find the equation for the conditional probability B stroke A equals probability A intersect B divided by probability A. Then from the tree diagram, we can find the probability of B by finding the sum of the probability of the outcomes which involve B, that is the first outcome and the third outcome. So therefore, probability of B is equal to probability A intersect B plus probability complement A intersect B. So by using the same method, the probability of complement of B is equal to the sum of the probability of the outcome which involve complement of B. So in this case, it is the second outcome and fourth outcome. So probability of complement of B is equal to A intersect complement B plus complement A intersect complement B. So the probability of A is equal to the sum of the probability of the outcomes which involve A. So that is A intersect B and A intersect complement B. And the probability of complement A is sum of the probability of the outcome which involve complement A. So that is Complement A in the set B and complement A in the set complement B. One thing I want you to take note is probability A in the set B is equal to probability B in the set A. But probability A stroke B is not equal to probability B stroke A. Now let me show you how to use a tree diagram 
to solve a question involving conditional probability. Now let's look at the first question. Let L denotes a student is led and M denotes the student misses the bus. It is known that the probability that he is led when he misses the bus is 0 0.9. The probability that he misses the bus is 0 0.4. The probability that he is late when he does not miss the bus is 0 0.1. Find the probability that he missed the bus when he is late. First, I'm going to write the notation of each of the probability given. So, probability that he is late when he misses the bus is 0 0.9. So, here we can see that there is a keyword when. We know that he missed the bus. So, means this is the conditional probability. That is the conditional probability L stroke M is 0 0.9. Then followed by probability that he misses the bus. So this is the probability for M. Then probability that he is late when he does not miss the bus. So same thing, this is the conditional probability because we can see there is a keyword when. So means we know that he does not miss the bus. So this is the conditional probability L stroke complement of M. Then the question asks for the probability that he missed the bus when he is late. So this is also the conditional probability because there is a keyword when. So means we are asked to find the probability M stroke L. Now I'm going to construct the tree diagram. But the problem is which event comes first? Logically, we know that this student is late because he missed the bus. So, therefore, the event M comes first. So, the possible outcome for the first event is either he missed the bus or he does not miss the bus. So, the probability here, probability for M is 0 0.4. Here, the probability of Complement M is not given, but we know that the sum of the probability of these two branches is equal to 1. So therefore, since this one is 0 0.4 and this one is 0 0.6. Now for the second event, the possible outcome is either he is late or he is not late. So the probability here, this is the probability L stroke M. So probability L stroke M is 0 0.9. And so therefore, this one, the sum of the probability is equal to 1. So if this one is 0 0.9, so this one is 0 0.1. Next, this is probability L stroke complement of M. So given that it is 0 0.1. Therefore, since the sum is equal to 1, so here it is 0 0.9. Now for the final outcome, for the first part, this is M intersect L. The probability is equal to 0 0.4 times 0 0.9. The second outcome, this is M intersect complement of L. The probability is 0 0.4 times 0 0.1. The third outcome is complement of M intersect L. The probability is 0 0.6 times 0 0.1. The fourth outcome is complement of M intersect complement of L and the probability is 0 0.6 times 0 0.9. Now I'm going to find the probability that he missed the bus when he is led. That is M stroke L. So the formula for probability M stroke L is probability M intersect L divided by probability of L. From the tree diagram, probability of M intersect L, it is 0 0.4 times 0 0.9. Then for the probability of L, since L is the second event, if we want to find the probability of L, 
we are going to find the sum of the probability of the outcome that involve L. So in this three diagram, that is the first outcome and third outcome. So therefore, probability of L is equal to 0 0.4 times 0 0.9 plus 0 0.6 times 0 0.1. So when we simplify, it is 6 over 7. So finally, don't forget to answer the question. Therefore, the probability that he missed the bus when he is late is 6 over 7. Now we go to the second question. A and B are two events in a sample space S such that the probability of A stroke B is 0 0.5 probability of complement B in the set A is 0 0.5 and probability of complement B is 0 0.7. Then calculate the question A and B. So first I'm going to construct the tree diagram. Now which event come first? Now we look at the information given probability A slope B is equal to 0 0.5. So now I'm going to construct the tree diagram with event B come first. The possible outcome, it is B or complement B. From the information, we are given probability of complement B is 0 0.7. So since the sum is equal to 1, so the probability of B is 0 0.3. For the second event, the possible outcome is A or complement A. So from the question, we are given that A stroke B is 0 0.5. So the probability of this branch is A stroke B. So it is 0 0.5. And since the sum of the probability is equal to 1, so now we know that this is 0 0.5. Then the probability of A stroke complement B is not given, so we just leave the probability at the moment. Same thing, the probability of complement A stroke complement B is not given, so at the moment we just leave it there. So now when we come to the final outcome, the first outcome is B intersect A, the probability is 0 0.3 times 0 0.5. The second outcome is B intersect complement A. The probability is 0 0.3 times 0 0.5. Then the third outcome is complement B intersect A. And it is given that the value is 0 0.5. Then for the fourth outcome, it is complement B intersect complement A. So the probability is 0 0.7 times complement A stroke complement B. Now from the tree diagram, you can see that 0 0.7 times probability of A stroke complement of B is equal to 0 0.5. So from here, we can calculate the probability of A stroke complement of B by using 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.7 it is 5 over 7. Then since the sum of the probability of the branches here is equal to 1, so therefore we can find the probability of complement A stroke complement B by using 1 minus 5 over 7. It is equal to 2 over 7. So for the first question, we are going to find the probability of B stroke A the formula is probability of B in the set A divided by probability of A. So probability of B in the set A, we can get it from the first outcome. As for the probability of A, since A is the second event, if we want to find the probability A, we are going to find the sum of the probability of the outcome which involve A. So from the tree diagram, that is the first outcome and the third outcome. So the probability of A is equal to 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. That is 0 0.65.
So now we can answer the question to find the probability of V stroke A that is 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 that is the probability of B intersect A then divided by the probability of A that is 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 that is 0 0.65 so when we simplify the probability is 3 over 13 now to find the second question probability of B stroke complement A the formula is probability B intersect complement A divided by probability of complement A so probability of B intersect complement A we can get the probability from the second outcome as for the probability of complement A that is 1 minus probability of A so that is 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0 0.65 when we simplify the probability is 3 over 7 now in the following question I'm going to show you how to use the contingency table in solving question of conditional probability so in question 3 a box contains 25 apples which are either red or green and either big or small there are 20 red apples of which three are big altogether there are 21 small apples two apples are chosen at random from the box find the probability that a both apples are red given that at least one apple is red b at least one apple is red given that both apples are red first I'm going to construct the contingency table we start from the color of the apple then the size of the apple this is the number of red and big apple that is R intersect B this is the number of red and small apple so R intersect L this is the number of green and big apple G intersect B this is the number of green and small apple G intersect L then for the total this is the total number of red apple and this is the total number of green apple this is the total number of big apple and this is the total number of small apple and this is the overall total number of apple in the box so since from the question we know that we have 25 apples in the box so this is 25 then there are 20 red apples so here it is equal to 20 here of which 3 are big among the red apple 3 apples are red color then there are 21 small apple so total number of small apple is 21 then from this contingency actually we can complete the rest of the number of apple that is 20 minus 3 it is 17 here then 25 minus 21 it is 4 here then 3 plus 1 it is 4 then 17 plus 4 is 21 then finally 4 plus 1 is equal to 5 so now I have complete the contingency table now based on the contingency table two apples are selected at random now I'm going to find that what is the probability that both apples are red given that at least one apple is red since there is a keyword given that so we know that this is a conditional probability so now when I write in the form of conditional probability it is probability of both apples are red stroke at least one apple is red then according to the formula of the conditional probability it is equal to probability both apples are red in the sec at least one apple is red then divided by 
probability of at least one apple is red. Next, I'm going to list down all the possible outcomes for each of these. For both apples are red, the possible outcome is red and red. The first R stands for the first apple is red. The second R is second apple is red. So, first apple is red. Second apple is red. That is for both apples are red. As for at least one apple is red, so the possible outcome is R G first apple red, second apple green, G R first apple green, second apple R. R R means first apple red and second apple red. Then as for the probability, at least one apple is red. Now I'm going to list down the probability of each of the case. That is the probability of R and G plus probability for G R plus probability of R R. Now for the intersection means we are going to take the similar outcome of the left and of the right. So that is R and R. So now we have probability R and R. Now we can start finding the probability of each of the case. So for probability R R, the probability of first apple is red that is 20 over 25. Then the second apple is red, it is 19 over 24 because one apple has already been taken out. Then for probability R G, the first apple is red, it is 20 over 5. Second apple is green and is 5 over 24. Then probability G R, first apple is green is 5 over 25. Second apple is red. 20 over 24 then as for rr it is 20 over 25 times 19 over 24 so when we simplify the probability is 19 over 29 now for second question find the probability that at least one apple is big given that both apples are red so this is also a conditional probability because the keyword given that. So under the conditional probability, it is probability at least one apple is big, stroke both apples are red. So by using the formula of the conditional probability, it is equal to probability at least one apple is big, intersect both apples are red, divided by the probability of both apples are red. Now I'm going to list out all the possible outcomes for at least one apple is big. They are first apple big, second apple small, or first apple small, second apple big, or first apple is big and second apple is big. Then for both apples are red, the outcome is first apple red and second apple red. Now when we try to find the intersection between left hand side and right hand side, here we don't see any similar outcome. This is because the left hand side is about the size of the apple. The right hand side is about the color of the apple. So that's why we don't see any similar outcome. So in this case, we need to combine the size of the first apple and also the color of the first apple as well as the second apple. So to do this, for the first possible outcome, this is the size of the first apple, this is the color of the first apple. When we combine, it becomes the first apple is big and Red. Then as for the second apple, this is the size of the apple, this is the color of the apple, so means the second apple is small and red. Then as for the second possible outcome, the first apple is small and red. So we may combine together, this is the first apple, small and red. The second apple, 
this is big apple and red apple so when we combine together the second apple is big and red then for the third outcome the first apple is big and red color then the second apple is big and red color now we can find the probability for the first possible outcome the first apple is big and red the probability is the number of big and red apple that is 3 divided by the total number 25 then the second apple is small and red the number of small and red apple is 17 divided by the total number 24 because one of the apple already taken out now for the second possible outcome the first apple is small and red so the number of apples small and red is 17 so 17 divided by 25 times the second apple is big and red that is 3 divided by 24 then the third outcome the first apple is big and red that is 3 divided by 25 times the second apple is big and red but now big and red now remaining is 2 because one of the big and red apple already taken out now we have only 2 divided by 24 then for the denominator red and red first apple is red the total number of red apple is 20 divided by 25 times the second apple of red apple is 19 because the one of the red color apple has already been taken out so divided by 24 so when we simplify the answer is 27 over 95 so that's all for now do you understand what you learned today if you have any question let me know in teacher Eileen Matt's group if you find that this video is useful, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you keep on learning and keep on watching my videos. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.